So this past week marked probably the biggest leak we've ever seen in gaming history coming out of Microsoft with that FTC case where they uploaded one file that had several attachments specifically being read in, I believe, Adobe. And as soon as that broke, I mean, the floodgates open and we not only got information for Microsoft's plans going on this generation, but even up to 2030 with next generation plans. And uh, it's quite interesting and kind of weird, but we're going to discuss some of that here today and go over Microsoft's plans for a cloud hybrid future for games. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and we're going to start today with this video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Factor. With summer finally over and the holidays fast approaching, meeting your nutritional goals while keeping up with your hectic life is easier than ever with Factor delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Choose from a large variety of meals with more than 34 weekly restaurant quality options or round out your meals with add-ons including apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar bites or refreshing beverage options like shakes and smoothies. I like how fast these meals come together with just a few minutes in the microwave and afterwards cleanup is a breeze. It makes the entire process of planning out and preparing meals throughout my day stress-free and it keeps me on track for my nutritional goals. If you're really low on time, Factor still has you covered with lunch to go options that don't require a microwave at all. This summer, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SpawnWave50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's Factor75.com or click the link below and use code SpawnWay50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. So there are three slides that I wanted to take a look at here. Two of them really go in depth with their plans for next generation. And the other one I think ties in completely with the idea that Microsoft is trying to even bypass the necessity for a console at all. Now, I do want to point out and stress something that, that is pretty important. All of these slides and seemingly plans are from 2020, as in things clearly can change. I mean, things change all the time behind the scenes with these different companies, it, like months at a time. We're talking years later, right? So it's hard to say if Microsoft is in this exact same headspace, which I'll double back to as we finish up here, kind of where I think they are. But it was very interesting to see this pop up because it was something I had thought a bit about based on, well, one game specifically I'm thinking of that is now in development that they themselves have told us about, but also previous attempts at this. So if we look at this slide, mostly it starts from 2001 when Microsoft entered the console space more than 20 years ago with the Xbox, introducing Xbox Live, which if you really think about it, Microsoft has always attempted to be connected to the internet. I mean, that's how they that's how they entered. The scene was, hey, we're going to have a system that has that Ethernet port on the back, and we're basically expecting your system to be able to connect to the internet to play games online, and they even had downloadable content for the original Xbox, something that I'm sure many people did, don't really realize. And in fact, they attempted to have a storefront. You had to have like a disc that you popped in, but that was like a year, I think, before the Xbox 360 or like months before it. And that eventually turned into Xbox Live Arcade that eventually blossomed into the entire marketplace being available. And that's stuff that they mention here, even the Kinect, which is hilarious because they, obviously the Kinect's long gone now, but the digital media store, their security processor, Game Pass, uh, direct storage, Project X Cloud, and now moving up to next gen that they are targeting calendar year 2028 and that's something that has been mentioned publicly. Like they, that's not a secret at this point. Okay. Microsoft is targeting 2028. They believe Sony also is targeting 2028. And I mean, it makes sense. Falls in line with these companies, maybe trying to squeeze seven or eight years out of a generation that has been a slow start. I mean, does anyone disagree with this being kind of a slower generation to get going? Uh, so 2028, sure. That makes sense to me. But the part that caught me and I'm sure many people off guard is the idea of cloud hybrid games. And you might be wondering, what exactly is that? Well, technically, they have released a cloud hybrid game. It just didn't go over well. It, it was Crackdown 3. 
And if you played multiplayer for the game, the big thing they were trying to push was the power of the cloud. And a lot of that had to do with just destruction in the game for different buildings. You'd blow them up and it would calculate a lot of the physics and different things that are happening. All the calculations kind of on the server side. But because you were playing multiplayer games, you're obviously connect the Internet. Uh, and it was supposed to, I don't know, make some of the collision detection and all the different things happening as it was breaking apart feel more, I guess, realistic. That things can just kind of happen on the fly and it's able to figure all this out more so than what your local system would be able to. But it didn't go over well and it didn't really impress anyone. I mean, let's be, let's be real. Who was out there playing Crackdown 3's multiplayer even weeks after release? Not many, but... They at least tried it. They had the proof of concept. And now it looks like, at least going into their next generation again, as of 2020, that was one of the big, I guess, innovations. In fact, we have quite a bit of information around their plans back then. Uh, they have a cohesive hybrid compute with their vision being to develop a next generation hybrid game platform capable of leveraging the combined power of the client and cloud to deliver deeper immersion and entirely new classes of game experiences optimized for real time gameplay and creators. We will enable new levels of performance beyond the capabilities of the client hardware alone. So. In essence, your system, while being local, would still depend on basically the power of the cloud or their data centers to do a lot of heavy lifting around potentially a living world, just about, right? That's at least the idea. And I guess they would also give that to developers to open up to and say, oh, wow, okay, we have a lot of compute power on Microsoft side. What can we do maybe when we create an open world that has... I." I guess, just NPCs that live actual lives in that area. It, it's 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 interesting to think of how far they could take that, especially when they intertwine things like AI, machine learning. This is all stuff that they discuss. Now, they also discuss the idea of going from x86 to ARM, even mentioning the balance of big, little CPU cores, more power-efficient ones. And I was trying to, I was looking at this, and, okay, well, why would they go to that? The only thing I can really consider, well, the big thing would be if we have the, the I guess, ARM, and we are developing specifically for that for our box, we'll also be able to develop for things like cell phones, right? Mobile is a big push for them now, especially with the Activision Blizzard acquisition. They keep harping on mobile over and over and over again, and they can also provide support for devices that they don't necessarily produce, but... You know, for example, lacking thin OS for less than $100, $99 consumer or handheld handheld devices. So you could technically have, I guess, like an, an uh, one of those Amazon Fire Sticks maybe that has an Xbox app. And while we use it for streaming now, could also leverage and tap into some of this stuff, depending on how, I mean, who knows how advanced things get as we go along. This is something that would kick off in 2028, which might be the last generation then, technically. I mean, think about it this way. They would be taking less of a reliance on hardware, more of a reliance on the server side. And you know what? It kind of plays into the idea of them not necessarily wanting to do a mid-generation refresh in the sense of a pro console, because as we've seen with previous generations, they're, they tend to open up features that they're going to have in their next generation during the previous one, like midway through or towards the end. And there's one game that I think is in development that would be utilizing this, and that is from Kojima. He mentioned many times that the reason he's developing this game with Microsoft is, one, because Google Stadia went under, and apparently that's who he was developing with before to use their servers, but two, because of the ability that Microsoft has currently to provide data centers to... I guess, create some kind of experience that would only be possible with, say it with me, the power of the cloud. Now, they do mention still sticking with AMD for uh, uh, the GPU, and, and I still think they would have a machine that is somewhat capable. I, I don't think they're going to turn in basically a, a tablet in a box or something like that, but it would be relying, I'm sure, quite a bit on the cloud to do some much more advanced things. And when I'm thinking of much more advanced things, I'm thinking about uh, AI, for example, that maybe can 
yes, can learn, as they say, machine learning. So things can be altered and changed. They can react on the fly, but also create maybe more natural dialogue for NPCs that can react to other NPCs. So you could be walking around and rather than hear what what's a very obvious pasted together conversation from predetermined lines and that sort of thing, you could actually have the AI create NPCs that will talk and react on the fly based on what's going on maybe in the actual, like the real world. Like current events that are happening could find their way into your game and just kind of overhear it like you're walking down a street and, oh, that that's actual conversation. And, of course, they can also rely on the cloud, I'm sure, to do visual components, graphics, all that, too. So there's a lot of possibilities. But I do want to point out that if this is a future that Microsoft goes towards, like, this is it for physical media. We're done. And you know what? It, again, seeing the other part of this that they were planning, which had to do with hardware and accessories. So I'm looking at the controller now. But we also had the their quote-unquote mid-gen refresh, which was really just the Xbox Series X with updated Bluetooth, updated wireless, and a better controller that basically is doing what the PS5 and like the Switch Pro controller does now with its rumble and accelerometer and and uh, and all that. Uh, but eliminating that disk drive midway through would continue to push people more and more towards just digital everything and less of a reliance on any kind of physical media, which means you'd kind of already be in the cloud anyway. So if they can work to eliminate latency, technically they'll be fulfilling the dream that Don Matrick put out there in 2013 is way ahead of his time, obviously. Always online, and you have to rely on the cloud to probably be able to play your games. Now, I brought up this controller because it does have direct-to-cloud as a feature, which I believe means that it would connect to your router and just then go right to the data center rather than have to rely on a box or a system you have in your house to connect to and then go to the data center. And that's something that Google Stadia did to try to cut down on any kind of latency. So I think this would become the de facto controller. They would phase out the old Xbox series controllers and then continue on this. And basically, if you want to play Xbox games, you legitimately just need to buy a controller. And like, that's it. I, I don't know if there's a future where latency will be completely eliminated for these cloud-based games. I'd like to think you get there someday just with technology continue to advance. But there's a lot more in the way than just technology because Comcast is a company I know all too well. And they just don't really seem to care <laughs> about upload speeds or, or really latency, any of that. So there's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of service providers that you got to get around and hope that, I, I don't know, I, I guess one day they just wake up and they're like, you know what, let's, let's actually innovate <laughs> on the internet service provider side. So it's kind of out of Microsoft's hands in some of that, but they are at least working, as they mentioned in some of this documentation, to eliminate latency. It's just definitely in the, uh, uh, need to be researched category as they claimed. And I'll admit, I'm sure there are some pretty innovative things that different developers can come up with, with using uh, the power of the cloud and all that. It just hasn't really proven itself to me yet. Maybe Kojima comes along and comes up with some crazy or wacky idea and I'm like, oh wow, okay, yeah, I want to see what other people can do with with cloud computing intertwined with our local experiences on these systems. But until we get to that point, I'm still going to be fairly skeptical with the the cloud-based or hybrid cloud-based games, but well, I guess we'll see if this is still Microsoft's plans. I believe that the mid-gen refresh Xbox Series X, the, the one without the disk drive, and the Xbox Series S refresh, those are probably going to happen because hardware is generally figured out well in advance before it comes out. There's a lot of other stuff that goes into it, but plans for, say the next generation, eight years out, that can certainly alter and change course. And I got to admit, I, I am, I, I guess, uh, wondering what Microsoft's plans are with cloud gaming, because they don't seem as interested now as they were previously. Some of that could be that they are maybe stepping a little bit away from it because they're trying to get this Activision Blizzard deal to go through, but they seem to be stepping away from it a bit more than even I was expecting at this uh, at this point. But uh, we'll hey, we'll see as we go through this generation. I guess keep an eye out for the term uh, what cloud hybrid games to see if that's something that pops up maybe around the time that Kojima 
actually start showcasing his Xbox game. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.